Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It is time to look ahead to the derby on Monday. At Ibrooks, I've got Martin and Chris with me to look ahead to the big game. First things first, though, before we get into it, um, we have to talk about Celtic's latest signing. Um, the third signing of the January window was confirmed today. Celtic have signed Tomoki Iwata from uh, Yokohama Marinos. Uh, this is similar to the Dyson Maida deal. If you remember, he came on an initial loan deal with a compulsory option to buy. So that means it's definitely going to be completed permanently. In the summer, Iwata is a defensive midfield player, 25 years old. He's the J-League player of the season. And Chris, um, it's another defensive midfielder for us. That is one of the areas of the squad where right now we have quite significant numbers, but there's obviously rumours that Idaguchi and Abelgaard won't be here for too much longer. Um, what do you make of that latest signing? Well, I mean, as you can only go on highlights packages that kind Celtic fans put together, I mean, certainly, and the fact is he, he's played under Ange before, right? I think that's the most the most significant part is, yeah, I was watching highlights of him and Maida on the pitch together and Although he is listed as a, a central defensive midfielder, he, I think, much like Hatati, can certainly play in a variety of positions. So he fits that versatile player that Ange has, you know, loved so much over the years and has sort of brought into the Celtic squad that we've been fortunate enough to to grow. I mean, I do think Iriguchi will go. I think Abelgaard's loan will be terminated. And I think once McCarthy is healthy, I suspect he'll leave the club as well. So if all three of those players were to leave, then I don't think we'd have the same surplus in numbers that we do. But that boy looks like a player. He's also a Japanese international, played in the World Cup. Like he is going to probably be another absolute, you know, steal for probably what will be a very nominal fee to make it, you know, uh, a permanent deal uh, after the second half of the season. So we're at it again in terms of, uh, and I did almost laugh because you said it off air, but you didn't say it on air. It's the 3rd January signing, but it's only December 30th. So, I mean, it's um, it's fantastic that we're so proactive. I mean, I've said this myself in previous videos when I've been on this year. You know, real credit to the scouting staff, to Ange and, and to the board for at least being proactive. And look, some silly fans might sit there and go, well, these are not massive multi-million pound players, but that's not the system that we operate under. Um, but, you know, other than Idiguchi and maybe McCarthy, all of Ange's signings have been tremendous and have made massive contributions to where we are uh, and the and the transformation that the club's gone through in the last sixteen months is just remarkable. Absolutely, I uh, haven't watched it. What I think he's similar in stature to Hatati, maybe a little bit more stocky, more combative. He does look strong, uh, good reader of the game, good passer of the ball. Martin, I think that the question is, what is his role going to be? Is he going to be backup for Callum McGregor in that position, or is he going to be? coming into the team and, and maybe letting McGregor move up one. And therefore, it's it's a matter for Hatate and O'Reilly to, to think of in, in terms of competition. What do you think? I, I, th I think so. I, th I think McGregor's, you know, at the peak of his career, I think he's, he's and speaks very highly of him. Um, I think he's almost the first name on the team sheet, certainly in the top top five. So, um, and, you know, we see what value adds. You look at the Aberdeen game, just for example, and, and what a real... I said it was that day in a game we had to, to dig deep. Um, it was a bit like Scott Brown when he was there. When he was out of the team, we really missed him. I know he performed well during his recent absence, but no, I think McGregor's there to stay. I think we would all like to see him move a little bit further forward, you know, so move, mm -hmm. from, the, move from the number six position to the number eight. Um, I think this guy's coming in to, to play in the starting 11. I think, you know, you've already said that the, the J League Player of the Year, described as MVP, most valuable player. Um, I've seen that terminology used of him as well. 25 year old, you know, so he's not a youngster. He's he's been around for a while. I think he's coming in to, to start. Um, and quite excited, but I don't think it'll be instead of Calm. I think Calm will move forward and give us more options in the centre of the park. And I know just now, with Moy playing so well the other night, that we have got some interesting decisions to make in the, in the middle of the park. But but that's what we need. I mean, we went through a, a, a short period of time there under Neil Lennon where our options were very very limited. Whether it was players that were disengaged or injured or. Um, you know, just didn't want to be there. The, the, the manager wasn't playing them because they were 
they, they didn't want to, they didn't want to be at the club. You know, thinking about players like Cham and, and various others who were we, would have been assets in the right mindset. But what we've got just now is Ange bringing in people who want to be there. Not everybody, but the vast majority. And he he talks quite a lot about that that the players that come in will not just be technically valuable, but they'll be they'll fit into the culture. And he's he's massive on that. Um, and we can see that as I say, there's one or two potentially. Um, Talking about wanting to move on because they're not getting game time, but you know that perfection doesn't exist. But it does look like the guys that are there are the guys that want to be there, and I'm quite excited to to Wati coming in and, and hopefully hitting the ground running and coming into the team quite early on, like some of the others have done. I mean, Ange, Ange's hand was was forced to bring in Kyogo and various others. It was you know get off the flight, sign sign the paperwork, and, and get in the team as quickly as possible because needs must. If you think way back to when Ange first joined, we're not quite in that situation uh, where there's an emergency, but we do want to bring these guys in and see them feature in the team quite quite early on. So I think out of the three signings, he's the one probably likely to, to start almost immediately. Mm. Aye, absolutely excited to see him uh, when he finally gets here and he's available for selection. Right, let's get to the matter we're here for then. Celtic go to Ibrox on Monday. It's the New Year derby. We are currently nine points clear at the top of the table. And Chris, we could not be coming into this game in any better form. No, especially especially the last two games, you know, the 4-1 win at home against St. Johnston. And then, you know, like I was saying to, to Martin before we went on here is I, I had a small amount of trepidation um, going to Easter Road. You know, I, I know we won 3-1 there last year, but over the last few seasons, it's not been the greatest place for us to go. And even even historically in the last, I would say, 20 years, we've, we've had some very difficult spells at Easter Road. And I would say we rode the game a little bit in the first 10 minutes. Hibbs certainly came right at us and Hatati had a lot of trouble down, down the right-hand side um, to begin that game. But as soon as we got a foothold in the game, and especially that first goal, we just never looked back. And Maida was just absolutely sensational in that game. And, you know, if he's got his finishing boots on, he's probably got a hat-trick. He had a stupid diving header he probably could have scored. Definitely should have scored with the header that he hit the crossbar with. And then 65 seconds later, he scores probably one of the best goals I've seen this year from a Celtic player. It was just absolutely superb. And uh, it was just a really, really fantastic performance. And, you know, we just continue to get stronger and stronger. And just to have 18 wins out in 19 games to start the season. We, we haven't started a year like that since the first year under Rodgers, where up until that point, we'd only had sort of one draw going into the same stage of the season. So it really is a remarkable level of consistency. And yeah, there's been some, you know, 1-0, 2-0 games, the 4-3 game at Tynecastle, but it was nice to see in the last two games, we've, we've scored eight goals and really dominated possession and actually made the possession count in the last third. And that's going to be, I think, the, the telling point on, on Monday is I expect us to have the lion's share of possession, even as, as the away team. And it's what we do with it that will will really count um, in, in this upcoming Derby game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's take a look at that league table then, because can never get enough of uh, looking at it. And we've got a nine-point lead. Um, 20 goals better off as well. Martin, and as Chris touched on there, 18 wins and only that solitary defeat. It's it's a remarkable level of consistency so far. Uh, I've been, been, blown up, been blown away. I mean, we're nearly at the end of the year in this calendar. year's massively impressed me in, in the league. 37 games in the league and out with that, 33 victories, one, one defeat um, and the three draws, two of which were at the tail end of the season when we were getting over the, over the finishing line and and the draws were, were favourable results for us rather than drop points. So really just a, a Hibs away 0-0 and, and a defeat at St Mirren. For the full calendar year, every other result's been a, a favourable result. So a remarkable calendar year. Um, and in this particular season, to, to win 18 out of 19 games is just sensational. You know, that, that return of 54 points would get us 108 if we repeat that in the second half of the season, which would be a record. Um, and that game against St Martin, St Martin were excellent that day, but but we made a lot of unforced changes and, to some extent, underestimated the, you know, the task ahead. Uh, defensively, we struggled that day, and offensively, we were nowhere near as good as we would normally be. So, you know, a solitary defeat, but we reacted very, very well to that defeat and come back really, really strong. And the team's just getting stronger and stronger. You know, some players who are maybe out injured 
who are now back. We've not got much by way of injury, and, and we're, we're, we're making some some good signings as well. So I feel like we've achieved an awful lot in that first half of the season, but I feel like we're in a significantly stronger position now than we were at the start of the year. Um, I mean, some of the players and, and, and the way that Andrews developed them, and they've developed themselves. You know, you look at Moy being a prime example the other night. A lot of fans didn't think he was going to be good enough and he wasn't going to be able to perform. And then he goes away and has a sensational World Cup and back he comes and he was, fans were singing his name the other night. Maeda, I know he's been a little bit inconsistent, but again, he was sensational the other night. Taylor, um, you know, a lot of fans didn't think Taylor was going to fit into that team and he wasn't he wasn't, he wasn't, wasn't good enough to play for Celtic. Look at him now, he's one of the best players on the team. Starfelt, he's now one of the, the heroes in that team. And you can go through every single player in that team and we're just... 10 times stronger than we were at the start of the season and that's what makes me think that why can't we repeat what we've achieved in the first half of the season in that second half why can't we go on beaten why can't we go on and win all 19 games I, I generally believe we can and it's the strongest I've felt um, that the team's been for a long long time potentially going as far back as 20 years you know going way back to the Martin O'Neill times um, when we had you know we signed some big big names um, and I know the Brendan Rodgers team is a good team it would be an interesting debate to say what the strongest teams are but I certainly Confidence levels, I feel as confident as I have done for a long, long time in the Celtic side. Yeah, Chris, and if you look at the, the recent form in this fixture as well, that's also turned 180 degrees since Ange came in because we were off the back of a, a long run where we were struggling in this fixture and and now we are dominating it again. We had the 4-0 win uh, back in September, obviously, which was absolutely fantastic. We won at Ibrox last season, which was huge in clinching the title for us. Uh, we had the 3-0 game in February as well. Um, we're doing good in this fixture again um, and and must be coming into it. Uh, the players particularly full of confidence. Yep, full of confidence, but you can be absolutely certain that Ange is making sure they don't take anything for granted, right? And I think that, you know, just even watching Juranovic's interview there on Celtic TV the other day, he was talking about he could see the level of competitiveness and training having come back and had his week break from the World Cup. And it's like, oh, you can tell there's a derby game coming um, and the players will be very well prepared. But I mean, yeah, the last time Rangers beat us in the league was going all the way back to the start of last season when Ange had literally just turned over the entire squad um, they beat us one nothing with a Hollander goal, um, but since then they obviously haven't beaten us in the league, and we've had a couple of absolute romps in that time where the game was over by half time um, twice, you know, three nothing and three nothing, um, and then obviously last year when when really the chips were on the table, we had a three point lead going to to, to Ibrox, we lose that game, it's tied with six games to go. Whereas we won 2-1 and we actually went behind in that game in the first three minutes. So just, I'm not concerned if we go behind anymore because I feel like this team does not panic. Um, and that's one of the, you know, the real undertones of this Ange Postacoglu era is even when we've gone behind in Europe, and I know ultimately we lost a lot of games in the Champions League, but we, we've gotten ourselves back into games many times and it's just been that last, you know, half an hour or, or 45 minutes where we've gotten ourselves undone at times. But there's a real belief, a real character and a real togetherness. And, and Martin hit it perfectly well as we've bought some very good technical footballers, but their character is also of a very high standard. And that's really what makes a team. It's not the individual players um, and how they play individually. It's how they play collectively as a team that really defines how you deal with adversity. Um, and this team has done it over and over again under Ange. And like, it, I can't say I've ever felt this comfortable uh, going into a game, you know, at Ibrox, um, but just based on our form and based on how the team will be prepared and, I'm certainly very confident going into the game. And look, a win seals the title. No no questions if Sans butts or maybe he's 12 points to go. 12 points, sorry, with you know only another 18 games. We're, we're, we're not going to lose from that position. Martin, thinking back to that, that victory at Ibrox in April, I think that's one of the most impressive games and performances that this team have put in under Ange Postacoglu because... We went behind early, and you think going going behind early away at your major rivals is probably the biggest mental test that you'll ever have to face. And and the way we dealt with it, we turned the game around by half time, but also in the second half, we showed a different side to to what you 
typically associate with this team. We were really strong defensively, um, and any crosses Rangers could throw at as we dealt with them, Carter Vickers and Star felt that they were absolutely excellent. And I think that sort of performance is something that gives you huge confidence because you know, as Chris says, that this team can deal with adversity. Um, and they've they've been there and done it before in these big fixtures. You can you can tell a lot from from the fans, um, and one of the lucky ones that was that was in the crowd that day, and you know, to start Celtic fans, bit of party atmosphere, and then as as Chris said already, we, we go behind the early doors, and the Rangers fans are really really loud and noisy, and until Celtic very quickly got themselves back into the game, and then you could hear a pin drop um, all around your eye blocks, other than the Celtic fans having an absolute party for for the lion's share of that game because we knew we were in the ascendancy, and they knew they were in a game. Um, and they were very, very quiet um, that, that that day. That's what I remember most about that. Um, and I think that's when they realised, you know, that we weren't going to get it easy that day. And as you say, Celtic, and particularly in the tail end of that game, they made a conscious decision to sit back um, and just absorb the pressure and, and managed it very, very well. You know, it didn't you didn't get a feeling. And often you do when you're at these away games and you're outnumbered and the, the opposition fans are, are if if they are loud, um, you can sometimes just get a sense of, you know. It's inevitable that we're going to concede a goal, but I didn't that day. I felt really confident, despite the fact that they had all the possession and 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 in the, the final third, um, just felt like we we're going to see out the game, and we did. And we did a very professional job. So um, I just got, I go into this super confident, and you don't often go to Ibrox super confident. You know, we had that run under Brendan Rodgers with 15 games undefeated, and you know a lot of big big results in there. And then Paul, I remember your nervousness during that run. Of, I think it was seven games that we we didn't manage to get a victory, and Rangers were. We're in the ascendancy, but but we had a club and we had a team and we had a manager and all the rest of it that were that were on their knees and and we should have made changes much quicker. When when you look back at that now, we had loads of players there that didn't want to be there. And um, the dressing room was lost, but we've we've turned the tide now, and I, and I can see us going on a further run of absolute dominance in this fixture. And um, that that's the way I feel, and and a lot of it's about you know who, who do you sign, but also it's about player retention as well. You know, Celtic have, have not lost any of their assets and, and I don't see us losing any of their assets. Now, Ange has come out and said, if some of these players want to move on, then I won't hold them back or let them move on. But I think he genuinely believes that a lot of these guys are here to stay, certainly for three or four years, and they want to be here. They want to develop themselves. Um, I mean, I look at who moved out of Celtic, you know, you're, you're a Yeti and Barkas and Paul and Golly and players like that. Our only real loss was was uh, Ben Hook and, and, you know, there's a set of circumstances around that. Whereas you look at Rangers and who they've I mean, they, they lost two of their biggest assets in Aribo and, and Bassey, prob- probably their two biggest assets. I mean, they're still clinging on to telling us that Morelos and, and Kent are, are superstars, but we've yet to see it. So they lost two of their big assets and, and almost everybody they brought in has, has been a failure other than potentially Tillman. Everybody else has failed. So we've strengthened significantly. And when you compare the managers, you compare Postacoglu to Beal, it's that there is no comparison there. I mean, Ange, always victories as a player and as a manager, always accolades. His trophy cabinet's full, and 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 Beals had twenty odd games as a manager, won nothing as a player, nothing as a manager. So, you know, from the top down, from the ambition that the club are showing with regards to the early signings, and continuing to bring in players that are, are going to stay with us, and and getting them for a good amount of money as well. Some of those made that one and a half, and Hadati one and a half, and. O'Reilly and Juranovic, we're getting these guys for one and a half, two million pounds. Um, so from the board level to the managers to the assets on the pitch, I just feel like we're going to absolutely dominate this this fixture in, in, in Scottish football for the next the next decade. I generally do. And a couple of the a couple of the, the records I'm really excited about that we're getting close to to to, to taking over from Rangers. So the fifty five versus the fifty two, that's that's about to go, isn't it? In our two or three years and we'll we'll get to fifty six. But the other interesting one is the head-to-head games, 168 to 162. So we're closing in on that now as well to have you know more victories versus Rangers than, than the other way around. So I can't wait for those two. And if you, if you went back to when I was much younger, I, I wasn't sure if in my lifetime I would see us dominate those two stats, but they're, they're, they're very close and, and we are going to dominate both of those in the next. Certainly for the, the victories against them, we could do that by the the early part of next year, another six victories against them and we'll, we'll, we'll be ahead of them and, and, and victories in the head-to-head. So, can't wait for that. I let's hope so. Chris, um, the manager's got huge selection headaches, or we think he has. Um, who knows what he's thinking, but on the face of it, Moy and Maida, who have touched on already, brilliant the other night at Easter Road. Um, typically, they wouldn't be in your, your starting 11 going to Ibrox, I don't think, for most people. 
Um, but do you think they've given the manager something to think about? And we've obviously got the situation at right back as well. You think Juranovic will come back in, uh, but then that creates the problem in midfield because you expect Hatati to go back and take Moy's place. So, I mean, three of the back five, including the goalkeeper, picked themselves, right? So it'll be Joe Hart, it'll be Starfelt and Cara Vickers. I, I think Taylor just took a bit of a knock. I don't think, I don't believe he'll miss the game. I think he'll play. And Juranovic was on the bench, so even if you're going to get 60, 70 minutes out of him, and then if John, Alistair Johnson would be eligible, so he could be on the bench as your right-back replacement, because I don't feel like playing Hatai in that position in this game gets the best out of us as a team. It's fine to do it against St. Johnston and, and, and Hibs, but Hatai, McGregor and O'Reilly, I believe, will, will start the game. I think if anything, Moy would come off the bench, either at half time or at the 60 minute mark that that's my personal opinion um just based on his goal scoring record abada has to play <laughs> he, he has to how, how, how can you not play him based on how he has been in this fixture he has been absolutely devastating and he he's given rangers and barisic in particular nightmares. I'm sure Barisic wakes up and sees number 11 just ghosting past him at the front or back post. Um, and then Maida, Maida will play for sure because I think, you know, just based on his form since he came back from the World Cup, he, he's just looked, brought his game almost to another level as a result of the quality of the opposition he's, you know, played against. Um, and I think you can't drop Kyogo because he scored in four straight games and I don't know if this is something we're going to talk about, but I want to see a game from him on Monday, right? First time we played against Rangers, he was out of position. He, Edward played through the middle. Kyogo played on the left. Then he tore his hamstring. He was never really quite the same when he came back. Fully fit in the game against Rangers, and then he gets a shoulder injury 60 seconds into the game. So I, I really want to see something from him, and I, I believe he'll be highly motivated tomorrow. And I just think... If it's that front six, I I truly believe we are going to cause Rangers an absolute world of trouble, a world of trouble, and that, that's who I believe the team will be. So I, I don't. Jota, I don't Jota's on the bench. Jota's on the bench, hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. I'd be shocked if he's in the starting eleven. If I'm honest. Would you? Yep. Yep. Okay. I mean, Martin, that tells you where we're at in terms of options. Um. When we've got six million pound man Jota, who's scored two goals recently against Rangers, an absolute screamer in the last game, dink the goalkeeper, man of the match performance, and we're like, he might be on the bench. Um, so many options. Do you think? I mean, do you agree? I think Abada. The only thing, the only caveat with Abada, I would say, is his big performances against Rangers have come at Celtic Park, um, and I can't remember off the top of my head. I didn't check it before we came on um, how many starts he's had at Ibrox. I know he came off the bench. And and the two one game uh, in April, that's that's my only caveat for Abada. So I think we could see Jota and and, and Maeda out wide. Um, Martin, what do you think? I, I think I think you need you need to be very very careful um, with, with, with these games, particularly at Ibrox and and traditionally at Tyne Castle as well. You know, like say your Martin O'Neill's when he was picking players. I spoke about this before. Maravchik was never. Never picked for these these types of games um, where you get less time on the ball. Um, the fans the fans are on top of you, all that sort of stuff. You need to be careful that you don't play any more than one of those types of players. And I think if we did, if we were to play, for example, Jota and Abada somehow and, and fit those two into the team, then you'd have two of those what I would class as as, as luxury players. I, I think Andrew's shown his hand time and time again with regards to who's his who's his, his, his main squad just now. So we've got, we have got loads of options. Um, you know, we've got players like. Max Ivanovic and, and various others that have come in and, and will add value. But traditionally, his, his start in 11 has been his, his favoured Jota and Maeda. Um, and his three subs, it's almost become predictable that he brings on at 60 minutes as Giacomacus, Moy and, and Turnbull. And then Abadas tends to be the other one. Now, it might not be obvious to everybody because you know, you're know you not always going to have those same players available every single week. You've got injuries and therefore that's where you see a bit of rotation. And he does make unforced changes. But he's tried and tested. He's starting 11. Tends to be the four that Chris has talked about at the back. You've got Juranovic, Starfelt, CCV, Taylor, and, and obviously Hart and goals. McGregor goes without saying. And then he tends to play O'Reilly, Hitati, 
Maeda and Jota that, that, and with Kyogo, right? So that's his go-to team and that's the team that I think he'll start with, right? And, and there's nothing to suggest that he will... You no, know, Jota has been on the bench a little bit recently, but I don't think there's any harm in that. You might argue that, you know, it's trying to keep him fresh for the Rangers game, for example. Jota's one of our biggest assets. Let's not kid ourselves on. He's, a, he's an absolute hero and he will produce a bit of magic given half a chance. So for me, I disagree with Chris. I think Jota will start. Um, I think Abada will feature. I don't think you'd want to play Jota and Abada. The other thing, I've described them as luxury players, but the other thing you want to have, and I know Angel want this, is they want players who are in your face and hardworking. And you get that with Maeda, you get that with Kyogo and a few others. You can't have a team full of them. It's, it's almost unrealistic to think you've got a team full of 11 people who are all going to run about daft. You need to have a little bit of, you know, your holding type players. But you've got an O'Reilly who's not running about all over the place. Um, but you've got a busy McGregor, a busy Hitati, Maeda, and therefore you can afford a Jota or a Nevada, but you don't want too many of those types of players. So for me, it'll be Maeda and Jota, because the two, the, 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 the wide players are probably the biggest dilemma for us. I, I think Moy, pat on the back, well played, a lot of the fans, and I think the manager himself said it was, we're waiting on that big performance from Moy. I don't think a single performance against a very poor hip side justifies a starting position. I think the versatility of O'Reilly... Um, you know the fact that he can he can he can drop down deep. He can get his his vision, his passing, all that stuff. Arela really brings a lot to the table. So I think Moy will be pat on the back, back on the bench, and we've seen quite a bit of that with the manager as well. You know, Forrest played particularly well in a couple of games recently, back on the bench. So you know, a, a single good performance, or even a run of two or three performances, he will default back to the eleven that he trusts the most, and he's favoured eleven players. And I'm confident that will be Maeda and Jota out wide. And O'Reilly and Hattie in the middle, which you'll go up top. Hmm. Yeah, you've shown time and time again, Ange, that there's very little sentimentality if you come in and you perform. Um, it just resets and he picks the next, the, the best team for the next game. Chris, we've scored 12, uh, 12 of our last 13 goals against Strangers have come in the first half. I mentioned that game in April where we went behind but then turned around by half time. The games at Celtic Park, we have absolutely blown them away in the first half. Again, there's there's that as as Martin touched on when you, when you go to Ibrox, you need to, you need to be aware that they might come out the box and the the crowd will be behind them. Do you expect us to to go for the jugular in the first half, as we usually do? Yeah, a hundred percent because that's the way Ange plays. It's Ange ball, right? I mean, he wants to put he wants to put the opponent. Obviously, he's not going to be expecting us to be you know foolish in possession, but you know the way the way that we play, it's. You've got the quick triangles, you've got the inverted fullbacks, you've got the rotation through the front five or six, and it's the, it's the it's the composure, right? It's the taking your chances. You're not going to get likely as many chances in front of goal against you know Rangers as you, as you might against some of the other teams in the SPL. That's just kind of being realistic. But I think we're like I said, if if my team selection and it only differs Joa Joa and Abada are the only two differences that that, that Martin and I have, right? Uh, and I'll don't get me wrong, if Joa plays, I'm not going to be disappointed. Just to make that very clear, he's an absolute superstar. But just a just a gut feeling I have. Um, but yeah, I think we'll go for the jugular. Um, and I I feel like if we score first and that if that first goal comes in the first 10, 15 minutes. Rangers will absolutely crack because their fans will be just all over them. And, you know, Beal has no experience in this fixture whatsoever. And Ange has been around the block. And I think he will have this team very well prepared. And they won't be taking anything for granted, but there will be an expectation that we get the ball down, we play our football. And when we get our chances, we must take them and we have to punish any mistakes that they make. You know, and, and, and just, you know, play our football. And if we do, I'm very confident there's a very positive result coming out of the other side of Glasgow. Martin, we've talked already tonight about how strong a position we're in coming into this game. Um the worst case scenario here is that is that we lose. Um and given given the form of both teams and how we're playing, you wouldn't necessarily expect that, but listen, anything can happen in these games. But if that was to be the outcome. Um, we've still got a six-point lead, and I think that puts all the pressure on Rangers for this game. Uh, it does, and, and there's a little bit of you that thinks that they absolutely have to win. You know, they're out there fighting for their lives. They've got a new manager that's come in with some new ideas. I'm sure it will add some value. It brings a bit of freshness with it. There was definitely a staleness with 
who Van Bronckhurst, who, who I thought would, would be a, a really good manager for Rangers, but it didn't, it didn't prove to be the case. So a new manager comes in, makes it makes the players feel valued, brings some, some creative technical ideas to the team, and they have to win. Versus a Celtic, where some of the pundits have been talking this week and the players themselves about the only thing that could go against Celtic is complacency when you become a bit, you know, this is easy type thing and, and you don't give... 100% because you just take it for granted. Um, I don't think Andrew allow that to happen in the Celtic team. And I think we've got strength on the, on the, on the bench that, you know, if, if things aren't going our way, we'll, we'll make changes, whether that be a bad or, or, or other tactical changes, you know, rotating players um, around. And that's the other thing about the wide players. Quite often we just flip them from one side to the other. So, but as you say, you know, worst case scenario, and it can happen in any game of football, a single game of football results can go anyway. So we can't, we can't rule out a defeat, that's for sure. So we do lose the game. We've still got that six-point advantage plus, you know, 20-odd 20, 20 goals. I mean, I think we've scored 61 and lost 15. So for every goal that we concede, we're, we're scoring four goals. It's a sensational return. The goals are coming from all over the pitch as well. So we lose the game and we're still six points ahead plus all that goal difference, which is essentially seven points ahead. And we go again um, and we react well to that. And um, we go on another run and we, and we just keep the pressure on Rangers. I don't think this Rangers team is good enough to go on a run in the way that we've... I mean, that's now 12 consecutive league victories for us. And some of those, as Chris said earlier on, have been narrow victories, but that's a sign of a, a strong team that can that can come from behind and, and, and still still win the game, you know, not just settle for a draw, but keep going, um, you know, that, that never stop ethos. So, you know, if, if we lose a game, it's not the end of the world. We'll just brush ourselves down as we did after the defeat to St Mirren and, and go again and, and, and learn from whatever it is that's gone wrong in the game. We can't rule that out completely. Um, but I'm confident Paul going into the game that you know, and and to some extent you couldn't blame really manage if he goes into that game thinking let's let's go in not 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 going to get a draw, but if the game's um, sitting with a draw with 20 30 minutes to go, game management just see the game out. You couldn't blame him for that because to maintain that nine point advantage with plus 20 goals, essentially 10 points, you say well why, why wouldn't why wouldn't you um, do that? I, I don't think Angel do that either. I think he'll go out to win the game and get us that 12 point advantage. But we come away with a draw. Um, you know, that wouldn't be a bad result at all, Paul. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Chris, as ever, in these uh, preview shows, I'm loath to ask you for a prediction. Okay, so I did the last preview show, and I didn't make a prediction, and we won for nothing. So I'm not giving you one, because I'm going, I'm, oh, that, yeah. that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure last time. Martin was... I think it was me and Martin that did the last preview show as well, and Martin was incredibly confident, and we won for nothing. So I'm not giving you a prediction because <laughs> it'll turn out to be the right thing. So there you go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, Martin, if you were confident the last time and it was four 0 what are you saying this time? <laughs> I, th- I think I think I think that the four 0 was 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 a home game, wasn't it? Which you know, let's not kid ourselves on. There is there does tend to be home advantage in these games. Um, hmm. So I'm, I'm confident of victory, confident of victory, and I wouldn't always be um, confident of victory going to Ibrox, but I am, and not bullish enough to think that we'll come away with with a, a huge margin. I don't think I don't think we need to go chasing the game and scoring loads of goals. If that's the way it happens, then great. So I think it'll be a victory, and I think there'll be a goal or two in it. Um, you've seen it Hibs the other night. You know, it's not as if we're not losing goals. Um, we're not. We're not coming away with loads and loads of zeros against us, so I do think we'll concede. Um, but I think you know it's only been two occasions this year in the league that we've not scored two goals, and that was against St Mirren, a game with half our team, uh, and against Aberdeen, where Aberdeen just parked the bus. I don't believe Rangers are parked the bus; they can't afford to. So um, we're scoring goals for fun. So I'm going to predict we'll score three, um, and I think we'll lose one or two. So I'll go. With, I'll go with three-two, um, a solid three-two victory. Mm, there you go, could be a classic and as ever I'm not going to give a prediction either uh, right, there you go, that's it for the previous show like this video, comment with your own thoughts below I'll be back tomorrow with the starting 11 prediction and I'll also have audio from the press conference I'll be at the press conference tomorrow with a player and Ange Postacoglu ahead of the game so stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already thank you 